Getting called a Nazi for opposing a genocide. Notes from the Edge of the Narrative Matrix. It's the most 2020s thing in the world that there's an active genocide currently underway, and it's the people who oppose it who are being called Nazis. Gaza isn't one of those issues where you have to respect the other side's opinions. Supporting a genocidal massacre is not an acceptable opinion for anyone to have. This is worth hurting people's feelings over. Worth losing friends over. Worth disrupting Thanksgiving dinner over. This is a tweet by Defense for Children. Gaza update. Israeli forces have killed at least 4,104 Palestinian children in Gaza since October 7th. Approximately 1,300 children are under the rubble of destroyed buildings, most of whom are presumed dead. Anyone who looks at these numbers and still opposes a ceasefire is saying something significant about who they are as a person. They're saying their conscience has not been formed properly. They're saying they never developed into mature adults. They're saying they wasted their time on this planet. Ah oh shit, you guys, we gotta let Israel keep murdering thousands of kids. Turns out if you squint really hard at the phrase from the river to the sea, the words transform into genocide the Jews. It is right to call for the abolishment of the murderous apartheid ethnostate of Israel. Only by the most determined mental gymnastics does calling for all Palestinians to be freed from apartheid, murder, and abuse due to their ethnicity sound like a call for the genocide of Jews. A state whose existence requires the mass murder of children every few years is not a state that should continue to exist. It's a crazy coincidence how Israel bombing Hamas in ambulances, hospitals, mosques, schools, refugee camps, water towers, and buildings full of children looks exactly the same as what it would look like if Israel was just massacring civilians with bombs. It's a tweet by Ben Shapiro. Once again, the images from Gaza are awful and heartbreaking and entirely the fault of Hamas. The minute Hamas gives up the hostages and surrenders, this is all over. Everyone knows it. And everyone calling for a ceasefire is doing Hamas's dirty work. This belief that it's fine and good for a government to keep massacring children by the thousands until its enemies give it what it wants is just about the most evil position you can possibly imagine anyone espousing. And it's very, very mainstream among Israel apologists. I've been writing for years about the murderous foreign policy of the U.S. and its sidekicks, Australia and the U.K. But when Israel starts massacring children by the thousands, its apologists tell me I've got a hateful fixation on Israel for writing about it. These people are ridiculous and do not deserve to be taken seriously. Breaking. Sources say some Hamas fighters may have been injured in crossfire from Israeli airstrikes on children and in civilian infrastructure. There's a screenshot from the New York Times of an anonymous U.S. defense official saying operations so far have not come close to destroying Hamas's senior and middle leadership ranks. Tweet from Caitlin. The whole argument behind the human shields narrative is that Hamas bases are hidden among civilians, so civilians die when Hamas is bombed. And yet somehow Israel has managed to kill 10,000 Gazans without doing any meaningful damage to Hamas. Maybe they're just lying. No, no, you don't understand, man. Hamas uses human shields. Really, really advanced human shields. The kind where there aren't even any Hamas members anywhere near them. It's just a 100% human shield with 0% combatant. The most secure kind of shield there is. Everyone who advocates de-escalation and ceasefire is always accused of treacherous loyalism to the other side. Always, always, always. It happened with Ukraine, and it's happening again with Gaza. Ever since the war in Ukraine started, those of us who called for peace talks were accused of being Putin lovers and Russian agents. Almost two years and mountains of human corpses later, and the U.S. is starting to push Kyiv to accept a peace deal that will almost certainly be worse than the one that was on offer at the beginning of the conflict. All that death and destruction for absolutely nothing. 
The only ones who benefited from that nightmare were the war profiteers who raked in vast fortunes and the empire managers who used it to advance their geostrategic agendas in Eurasia. Those of us who called for peace negotiations were objectively correct, and those who shouted us down and accused us of treasonous Kremlin loyalism were objectively wrong. Those calling you an anti-Semitic, baby-cooking terrorist lover for supporting a ceasefire are wrong in exactly the same way, for exactly the same reasons. All the arguments being made against peace right now will only end up serving the rich and powerful at the cost of unfathomable oceans of human suffering. You get peace by making peace. That's how you do it. You stop shooting, you sit down, you have conversations, and you make deals. The deals won't feel perfect, because they won't be. But they will be better than slaughtering children by the thousands for no justifiable reason and killing off parts of our own humanity in the process. You set your intention toward peace and harmony, and you start walking in that direction, one step at a time. It really is that simple. Anyone who tells you otherwise is lying for the benefit of the rich and powerful. I feel sorry for Zelensky. The U.S. abandoning your country for Israel is like your husband leaving you for his first wife.